In this modern age, no one believes anymore. But should we? The Jungle is next on the Twilight Zone Marathon. What's up, everyone? Thanks for checking in. Our Twilight Zone Review Marathon continues. You know the deal. Spoils are ahead. The Jungle was episode 12 from season 3, directed by William F. Clayton. This is yet another strong episode written by Charles Beaumont. The Jungle is based on Beaumont's short story, which appeared in 1954, If Magazine. As we discuss the jungle, I think it'll become evident there are a few similarities between this episode and Perchance the Dream, which was also written by Charles Beaumont. I already went over that one in a previous review. The jungle crafts a genuinely creepy though simplistic story that leaves a lasting impression. The story opened with Alan Richards, as played by John Danner, who has just returned home to New York with his wife. Alan has been hard at work on a hydroelectric project in Africa. We learn through his wife Doris that Alan's project is not without controversy. The project will leave many people displaced. Alan's wife is petrified because apparently a witch doctor has placed the curse on Alan. Alan completely shrugs off his wife's fears and superstition. Although I'd assume the dead goat left on his doorstep probably gave him some second thoughts. The carcass of a goat, a dead finger, a few bits of broken glass and stone, and Mr. Alan Richards, a modern man of a modern age. Hating with all his heart something in which he cannot believe. And preparing, although he doesn't know it, to take the longest walk of his life. Right down to the center of the Twilight Zone. Later, when Alan attends a board meeting to assess the project, he mentions that although the natives will supposedly benefit from their work in the long run, they're angered. They're going to be displaced, and the construction will decimate their sacred land. Alan warns that the local witch doctors have threatened to use black magic against anyone involved with the project. When the other board members left this off, Alan goes on to point out their own superstitions, such as astrology, rabbit's feet, and the fact that the building they're working in doesn't even have a 13th floor. Later, while he's in a bar with a friend, Alan notes a lion tooth charm his wife has left him for protection. Protection against lions. Turns out, Alan shouldn't have carelessly left this charm behind, because the second he does, the shit hits the fan. What follows is some of the most haunted moments in all of Twilight Zone, at least in my view. The curse seems to take full effect. Although Alan simply wants to go home, at every turn he's blocked. First, his car won't start. Then he attempts to use a payphone, but it's out of order. With that, the horror truly begins. Hello? The scenes of Alan struggling to get home but being haunted by the eerie soundscape of wild jungle animals is extremely effective. I find it interesting that in most cases the soundscape of jungle animals is typically something that's merely background in movies. But in this context, the sounds of the jungle and the foreshadowing of a lion attack are downright creepy. One of my favorite moments is when Alan is lucky enough to find a cab to get him home. Driver, the light's green, you can go now. Driver, the light's green. The absolute highlight of this episode is when Alan finally does reach the safety of his apartment. The noises do stop, Alan chills out, he pours himself a drink, then he hears a lion's roar from the bedroom. This is an absolute violent and horrific end. Obviously, everything's left up to the imagination, but the idea of Alan being torn apart by a vicious lion is probably one of the most brutal conclusions of any Twilight Zone I could think of. I really like this episode. It's pure tension and horror. There's a quick and solid setup and no filler. The haunting soundscape of the jungle really works for me. I don't mind at all that Alan is very obviously walking around on a restricted set. The atmosphere is more than enough to make up for any budgetary constraints. Alan alone, desperate, and scared shitless. Is all I needed to keep me on the edge of my seat. The lion attack in the end actually reminded me a bit of a movie called The Ghost in the Darkness from 1996. 
This was a movie about a bridge engineer forced to hunt two seemingly ghostly lions after they started attacking local construction workers. The theme in both stories is that if you displace people and start tearing apart their sacred land, you may have to pay the consequences. Another key aspect this episode explores is the notion of superstition in a so-called modern society. For this tale, it would seem that superstitious beliefs aren't something that you should necessarily scoff at or ignore. I mentioned earlier that this episode does share a few similarities with Perchance the Dream. Both episodes, which were written by Charles Beaumont, offer up a surreal and ominous setting. Both episodes foreshadow the demise of the main character fairly early on. And both episodes feature a main character who's haunted, tortured, and eventually disposed of in a violent manner. Yeah, I know, in the case of Perchance the Dream, it was all a dream, but to me, the image of a dude who goes screaming out a window is about as horrifying as a dude killed by a lion. There's very little subtlety in this episode. As far as the animal sounds go, they start off very haunting and creepy, but by the end, they do go a little bit into overkill territory. None of this was a deal breaker for me. I still recommend this episode, especially if you're looking for a good scare. John Denner was also really solid in this episode. He elevated the material. Had this part been miscast or played by a lesser actor, it could have fallen apart, maybe even become unintentionally comedic. I give this one 4 out of 5 killer lions.